Enemy jet bombers carrying nuclear weapons can sweep over a variety of routes and drop bombs on any important target in the United States. The threat of this destruction has affected our way of life in every city, town, and village from coast to coast. These are the signs of the time. Only in practice now, a rehearsal, a training exercise. But tomorrow, this siren may mean the real thing. And if you hear it, as you drive in your auto, as you sit in your office, or work at your bench, wherever you are, what will you do? What will happen to you? The Soviet Union has just launched the first spacecraft to ever enter orbit. It's making its way around the Earth at a speed of 18,000 miles per hour, and it's equipped with two radio transmitters that send signals back down to Earth as it circles the globe. The Soviets call it Sputnik 1. with Russia has been severely shaken. This is Douglas Edwards. Good evening. You are watching. Disrupt. Sputnik 1 was 23 inches in diameter, a 184 pound polished metal sphere with four external antennas to broadcast radio pulses. And these sounds can be heard all the way from Earth. Sputnik was meant as a message. This was a threat in the midst of a fight for world dominance. Sent from the USSR. This was known as the Atomic Age. With the advent of the atomic bomb in 1945, the world believed that the future was nuclear. Besides having the power to completely destroy the world, many at the time thought that this new technology would disrupt all aspects of everyday life. It was thought that nuclear would soon replace the need for coal and oil as a new source of energy. So nuclear concept cars emerged, promising advancements in propulsion. Atomic tourism even became common practice and this is how Las Vegas became known as Atomic City, where you could go and listen to a live band play on the rooftop of a Las Vegas casino while you sipped atomic cocktails and watched nuclear bombs explode on the horizon. Just 32 days after the launch of Sputnik 1, the Soviets are preparing for the launch of Sputnik 2. Both of these spacecrafts are launched on the world's first ICBM rocket, the R-7. ICBM stands for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, meaning the R-7 was designed to send nuclear warheads all the way from the USSR to America. And Sputnik 2 was meant to demonstrate how real this threat had become. Most importantly, Sputnik 2 would have a captain on board to lead the vessel into orbit. At the time, this was unimaginable because it had never been done before. But the Soviets were determined since Sputnik 1 had already failed operation just 21 days after launch, and they needed to make a statement. Laika was the name of the astronaut chosen to lead Sputnik 2 into orbit. And besides being a Soviet captain, Laika was also a dog. Laika 
Laika was what was known as a commoner in the Soviet Union. She grew up on the streets of Moscow in what was then the Republic of Russia in the USSR. But as fate would have it, she was volunteered for the Soviet space dog program that had been ongoing since 1951. In order for Leica to reach orbit, her R7 ICBM rocket weighing 280 metric tons must be able to reach 18,000 miles per hour in eight and a half minutes. This will get Leica to what is known as escape velocity. Even today, this is one of the greatest challenges of space travel. But in 1957, Laika is the first living creature to ever endure this amount of force. 26 courageous dog astronauts had been launched in rockets before Laika as a part of the Soviet space dog program, but none had ever made it into orbit. And so this was Laika's mission. If she is to succeed, it will make her the first living creature to ever reach orbit. The survival rate for the Soviet space dog program at this point was about 50%. So even under normal circumstances, Laika's odds were no better than a coin toss. But Laika's mission was different. This mission was a one-way trip. Sputnik 2 just wasn't designed to return back to Earth. Laika's fate lied in the heavens, in orbit. Laika leaves Earth's atmosphere, the R-7 rocket that has carried her there releases Sputnik 2 into orbit. Within minutes, Laika is floating above the Earth inside of Sputnik 2, looking down. As she floats around the globe, she carries the Soviet message of nuclear control and total world domination. But as Laika travels 18,000 miles per hour, around the biggest ball she's ever seen. One thing is for certain, she could have never predicted what would happen next. While the US swept Sputnik 1 under the rug as being no more important than a space potato, the implications Sputnik 2 carried with it could no longer be ignored. And this is when the space race officially began. Soon after Sputnik 2 was launched, President Eisenhower sent a message to Congress highlighting the critical need for the U.S. to begin investing in its own space program. Because Eisenhower is convinced that if the Soviets are launching dogs into orbit, the U.S. had better get to work. Not long after this memo, the National Aeronautics and Space Act of 1958 was signed. And this is how NASA is born. As a result of Laika's achievement, the next decade would be a race to the stars. On August 7th, 1959, NASA takes the first photograph of Earth from space with Explorer 6. September 14th, the Soviet Union would make the first unmanned landing on the moon with Luna 2. JFK would campaign on space exploration in the Soviet conflict. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And go on to become president of the United States in 1961. He's later quoted referring to the space race as a race for survival. In 1961, the race is on to put a man into orbit. And on April 12th, the Soviet Union beats the U.S. again and puts Yuri Gagarin into orbit, making him the first man to ever enter space. Oh, 
Shortly after, in February of 1962, John Glenn would pilot Friendship 7 around the Earth, becoming the first American and the second person to enter space. Dozens of missions followed as the competition between the two nations intensified. Until finally, in 1969, the United States put three humans on the moon. After this point, while more advancements are made, the race gradually slows over the coming decades. Space becomes a field of measured exploration, and it gradually falls into the background of the public eye as time goes on. But then, in the early 2000s, three private companies are founded, each with their own vision for making space the frontier of the future. Blue Origin, SpaceX, and Virgin Galactic start a new kind of space race. So today, the space race is heating up yet again, between billionaire moguls looking to leave their legacies in the cosmos. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Richard Branson are all working tirelessly on their own visions for the future of space travel. And so we're seeing a whole new world of possibilities emerge as the space race is quickly picking back up. But as we watch this unfold, we should never forget the legend who's responsible for everything from the founding of NASA to the rocket technology SpaceX is revolutionizing. Laika, the Soviet space dog, is at the heartbeat of the space race of old and of new. Very well may explain Elon Musk's affinity for dogs that are heading for the moon. Whatever advancements humankind manages to make in space going forward, we should always remember the original pioneer who opened the door to space exploration and showed us all what it means to be an astronaut.